Hello, welcome back. I'm Scott. And I'm Allison. And we are Jarhead, Jarhead and, and Ginger's, Ginger's Journey. Journey. Today, we're going to show you how easy it was to install these RV locks on our RV. Come on. We figured we'd start here and do just a quick unboxing and show you guys what comes uh, inside the box with the new RV lock. So here we go. At the first, the first card you pull has uh, some of their other products, information about some of their other products. 10% um, off coupon for your next purchase. And the instructions on how to uh, how to mount it here and the back is how to program both the padlock portion and the key fob portion so we'll be showing you how to do that uh, here shortly in this video then you have the main piece which is the actual lock that will go between the uh, go between the door or in the door uh, the, the outside piece and the inside piece you have one striker plate with six screws. I don't know why, there's only two holes, but we'll see in the instructions. And one um, key fob. From what I understand, this key fob can control multiple um, locks as well. And um, so we did, have, we did get two locks. We have two doors, uh, one for the back door and one for the front door. So we'll actually have two key fobs, but I think one key fob will be able to open either one uh, separately because they have a, a one and two system on them. So one will be the main door and two will be the back door or whatever the case is. So that's going to be really cool. I uh, can't wait to get this installed and see how it works. But that's it guys, that's all that's in the box. So the lock, the uh, key fob, the striker plate, and some instructions and, and uh, paperwork and that's all should be a uh, pretty easy install so let's take you out and get started on that come on alright let me start by showing you a little bit of what you're gonna need tool wise for this job I've installed the back one now I'm gonna install this front one for you guys so you can see how easy or hard it is you will need a small pair of uh, wire cutters to cut a zip tie a small uh, screwdriver to push the buttons on the back while you're uh, making the remotes learn and putting in your code and you're gonna need a Phillips screwdriver to take the old one off and put the new one on so we'll start with this all we need to do is clip clip the zip tie there so we can get the keys off of the lock and get them out of the way Then we're going to go ahead and disassemble the old lock off the door. They recommend that you have the door uh, held in place, so I've done that. I didn't do it on the back one, and it was it was a, a bit of a, of a fiasco trying to hold the door and do this at the same time. So this is just four screws on the back, and then these two screws here on uh, the side, and then this will come out uh, very easily. said earlier in the unboxing portion I didn't know why there were six screws I do now it's not just these two screws you're gonna replace all six of these screws that you take out of the old um, uh, door lock you could use a screw gun if you wanted I figured these screws were pretty short I wasn't gonna uh, take all the extra time to go and get my my uh, screw gun out of the truck and get it all ready and, and all that. So there's there's those four screws and that back plate will come right off of there. You don't need this anymore so we'll set it aside. And then in order to get this piece out, the, the front uh, part and the whole lock mechanism, you do need to take these two screws out of the side of the door here. So that's the next step. That's 
that's that. Now your striker plate will come off of there. And then this piece. come out just like that and there you have a nice big hole in your door next thing we're going to do is take the new lock put it up into place but we have to make sure when we're doing this that this wire uh, harness here comes through you don't want it up behind because this is what's going to hook to your back piece actually give you the power <clears throat> When you look at this striker plate, it's got a thin edge and a thicker edge. You want to make sure when you take off yours, you know which direction this goes back on. On mine, the, thin, the thin side goes towards the inside of the door. So this side here is where the thin side goes. So it will actually have to go on this way. <clears throat> and then if you look over here, you want to, you want to just adjust it so that the, the screw holes are lined up. And it appears that mine are pretty good. Go ahead and put this in place and screw it in. All right. Now we'll go ahead with the back piece. And you can see here's the wiring for uh, the other side of the door. There are batteries behind this box, so this is your power side. When you're putting this together, when you actually hook this to that, you should hear a beep. And then you also have to look between the door and here to make this, sure this red piece right here goes over the top of this little uh, stud that sticks out from uh, the piece on the inside there. <clears throat> When I was doing the last one, this was the, uh, the hardest portion was to get these wires out of the way of everything. You hear the beep? But the hardest part for me on that last one was to make sure these wires were out of the way of everything and to make sure this red piece actually connects right there. sure you hold it in place when so you get it at least uh, two screws in there so that's going to hold the hold the um, hold this red part on to that little stud so it's not gonna you're not gonna lose control and it's gonna fall out of there I'm going to finish this up and I'll get right back with you guys. 
The default code on these doors when you put them together is one, two, three, four. So what we're gonna do is make sure, now that we have it all, all the way installed, we're gonna make sure that it's functioning correctly. So one, two, three, four, lock. And the door locks. So we know it's actually going to uh, function properly. To get this thing to where you can program in your own code, you first need to push the, push the eight and then push the um, lock button and you should hear a long beep. Long beep, now you put in one, two, three, four again and lock. Then you put in your code twice and push lock after each one. I'm not gonna show you my code. Now that I have my secret code programmed in, anytime I hit my code, and lock or unlock the the door lock will do uh, what I ask it to do <coughs> the next thing we're going to do is program the fob so I can just push the button on the fob and have the door uh, lock or unlock that's done around on this side what we'll have to do is turn the fob learn on off button up to on and then we'll use our small screwdriver to push the button. We're just look, uh, listening for a quick beep on this one. And then all you have to do on the fob is push whichever button you want it to be. I want this to be door number one, so I'm going to push door number one, lock. And it gives you a long beep. That means it's accepted it. So now I should be able to push lock and the door should actually lock. And then unlock and the door should actually unlock. There you go guys, it was just that simple. There it is, all completed guys. The RV locks both installed, programmed with our personal codes and the fobs all working and ready to roll. If you like this video, please subscribe and hit that thumbs up and hit that little bell so you'll be notified of our next video. And also leave us a comment down below we read and comment back on all of the comments. We really love to see them. If you're here to the end, thanks for sticking around. We'll see you next time on Jarhead, Jarhead and Ginger's, Ginger's Journey. Journey. Bye. Bye.